invest some time in preparing that food in the kitchen every day. So eat real food is the key thing. And then move. You need to move. Even if you're working out every day for an hour a day and incredibly fit, and if you're sitting down at a desk, and I know Alex understands this, he implemented it in his whole, whole, whole uh, team over there, that you've got to move around. You should be standing up. You should be walking. So walking seven, ten thousand 10,000 steps a day, you know, four or five miles a day is, is really an essential part because we were designed to move. So if you, and then you have to sleep, of course. Most of us don't sleep enough. I violated this rule for many years of my life. thought I was, I was somehow exempt, uh, but it was only getting five hours for decades. But now I, str- I pretty much average eight and a half hours. So you've got to get enough good sleep, uh, cl- clean water, like you mentioned, eat real food and, and get their movement in and exercise. You know, speaking of sleep and speaking of the other characteristics too, but I thought the same thing. I, I really don't like to go to sleep. I like to stay up all night if I can. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll just sit there on the computer reading sure. about news and stuff. Yeah, there's, there's tons of stuff to do. There's tons of stuff to do in this ever-evolving, insane world, right, where everyone's shooting cops and everything. So I like to stay up maybe, you know, 2 a.m. sometimes. The problem is I try to wake up at 7 a.m., and I wake up, and I think I'm fine. But then during the day, I'll notice I'll be emotionally out of whack, and mm-hmm. I always fra- fail to correlate it. Sleeping is such a big deal. And if you have something like it sleep is. apnea, you're not getting any real sleep. And it just really, really messes you up. And at the same time, people don't understand. It's, 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 it's at, at a hormonal level, too. People are so upset and so mad. I was in a parking lot the other day, and I was just parking. And I stopped for like one second to look at something to the left of me. Someone was walking or something. And this woman starts shriek, screaming at me. F you, screaming at me, blaring a horn, because I stopped for like two milliseconds. And it's people like that that, unfortunately, are sick. They're constipated. Their hormones are out of whack. And they don't even know what real food is. You know, they I didn't go think to, that happened in Austin. Was, <laughs> yes. I didn't think that happened in Austin. Believe it or not, it does happen in Austin. This Austin <laughs> is definitely better off in uh, many areas. But um, overall, I mean, so let's say someone goes into a grocery store, though. What do they avoid? I mean, some really tips for the audience. Because most people will say, okay, eat real food. What's real food? Well, real food is food that hasn't been manipulated or processed, and it's typically not in a package. So that's tip- uh, generally food around the peripheral. You know, the middle of the store is designed where all the processed foods are. So anything that's processed is, and has a label on it that has a long list of ingredients, many of the, of the words that you get are very difficult to read unless you've had some scientific training, are, are, are typically foods you want to avoid. So you can have some of them occasionally, you know, but the bulk of majority of your food needs to, needs to satisfy that criteria. You know, so that could be fruits and vegetables, and and you have to be careful of the meats because many of the meats are available in traditional commercial grocery stores are CAFO from confined animal feeding operations, which are fed the processed foods, the GMO grains, and and given the uh, antibiotics, you know, eighty percent of the antibiotics being used in the country are given to animals, so you don't want to get them indirectly through the meat that you're eating. So, and then eggs, ideally from cage-free animals, you know, that are locally grown, which are relatively easy to find uh, in most communities. And if you don't know where they are, you go to a health food store, contact the local Weston Price chapter, and they'll connect you up with a source of local food that is healthy and can nourish you and your family. Well, Dr. McCullough, you're kind of like the grand master of nutrition. What do you eat on a daily basis? What do you eat for breakfast? What did you have today? Well, um, it's not only what you eat, Anthony, it's the timing that you eat. What I've learned recently is just that to restrict your t- the, f- the food that you eat within about an eight-hour window. So, and, and you could either skip breakfast or skip dinner. I think I used to say skipping breakfast was, was a wise strategy, but I've come to realize that skipping dinner is probably more useful because then you'll be fasting longer. When you go to bed, you really don't want any food in your system for at least four to four to Four hours, I would say. Three would be minimum, but four or five would be even better. So I, I, I pretty, pretty much my last meal is about three o'clock. And uh, I'll typically wake up and do my dental hygiene, and then I'll have some fruit. Uh, now I'm having clementine, tangerines, and mandarin oranges, which are really good. And then I'll uh, have some rice and uh, sunflower seeds, sprouts, and avocado, uh, s- some sesame seeds, uh, so, hey, let, let, me, let me switch gears up a little bit and talk about where you see all this going. Because obviously, you, you know, you've got your lifestyle in check. A lot of people are doing so. They're getting their lifestyles in check. They're following these protocols. Like you said, fasting. I mean, it's been, it's been used for thousands and thousands of years as a natural detoxification method. That's what people do. That's what they did for years and years and years. But so many people, our, gen, our genes are designed for. They're optimized for that. And if you don't do that, you're going to, to uh, not 
have optimal functioning for sure. Well, it makes sense. I mean, you're only going to eat, if, if you're hunting for food, you're only going to eat. You're not going to sit there and glut on deer for 24 hours every single day. You're going to have a hunt and you're going to eat some deer every now and then, and then you're not. You're going to forage for some uh -huh. vegetables, you know. It makes a lot more sense than glutting all day. But in the, in the grand realm of things, with the opposition to the GMOs, with the opposition to the toxic fillers, with the reception now of super high quality organic foods, with the you know, reception of organic supplementation and everything, overall in the next five years, what do you see as a prediction? Well, I think there's going to, we're gonna have continuous victories uh, that we're seeing and more people are becoming aware of these and will, uh, because the, you, it's difficult to suppress truth for long periods of time. I mean, they certainly can do it. They did it successfully with the cigarettes for, for nearly a century or so. But uh, interestingly, many of these same organizations, Big Soda, uh, Monsanto, they're using the same front groups and, and uh, PR groups to disseminate their lies. So they can confuse people for a while, but eventually people like Alex and, and your, your site and mine and others inform people the truth. And because we have these new tools and technology like the internet, which allows us to circumvent traditional media, which is typically bought out by these large corporate interest groups. So I think we'll see a, a wider adoption of these uh, the truthful uh, pieces of information, which will allow people to prevent chronic degenerative diseases. I would agree completely, and you are right. Sites like Mercola.com, Infowars.com, MySiteNaturalSociety.com, all these alternative news powerhouses, we put out articles, and I know on your site and on Infowars and Natural Society, I mean, oftentimes there's 500,000 shares on Facebook on some of these. With the uh -huh. Dark Act, sure. which would make GMO labeling, mandatory GMO labeling illegal in the United States. Uh, I wrote an article for that up on Infowars and Natural Society, and each of which have about 100,000 shares. And I've seen your posts on Mercola.com just go mega, mega viral. It shows that people want the truth. They want the information. And an interesting new development, I think, is legal action to do so in a big new way. And here's a headline. Department of Agriculture sued for withholding safety information on GM crops. The Department of Agriculture has been violating the Freedom of Information Act for over 13 years, according to the Center for Food Safety, who is now suing the agency for withholding information on the lack of safety of GMO crops. The Center for Food Safety filed a suit against the U.S. Agriculture, Animal, and Planet Health Service, and they basically are saying that the jig is up and they are going to do something about it fast. Uh, do you think legal action is really going to work in this case? And in closing. I think it's a, it's a, I'm not sure if legal action is the correct approach, but certainly political actions where you're using the same strategies. I mean, they, these large multinational corporations has, have been using these strategies for many, many decades, and they work. That's why they use them. They're, they're not stupid. They're very strategic and very clever. So I think that many of us are starting to understand that and, and employ very similar strategies to, to making influences. I mean, they because it's not just lawsuits. There's far more comprehensive strategies that you have to do to engage the behavior. Absolutely. I think we are making strides, making victories. Dr. McCullough, we're going to come back in the next segment and talk about more news. Alex Jones' powerful message to Louis Farrakhan is also coming up in the show and much more. Stay tuned. Welcome back to this Friday edition of the Alex Jones Show. I'm Anthony Gucciardi sitting in for Alex Jones. Coming up later on the show, we have a powerful message to Louis Farrakhan that Alex recorded today that you do not want to miss. We're here with Dr. Mercola of Mercola.com, and we're going to get into some news. Next segment, we're going to come back and talk about a scuffle between Trump staffers where protesters dressed up as the KKK and got into a tussle with Trump's people. Clinton aide refusing to cooperate with FBI probe of server, of course, which was put in a bathroom, very secure. Feds want evidence they let Mexican drug cartels buy guns kept quiet. Lots of amazingly... Happy news that we're going to cover and some really, really shocking stuff on Infowars.com right now. But Dr. McCullough, you were telling me that you have some really, really powerful information on Coca-Cola that you wanted to reveal on air. Yeah, so just, uh, please tell me about that. Yeah, we just had some, uh, it was actually covered in the New York Times, which was good. You know, so it's getting wide exposure. But, you know, one of the common strategies that large uh, industry will use, either drug companies or just as equally the food industry, in this case, Big Soda, is they have something called astroturfing, which means they create these front groups that look like they're beneficial to, to, the, to the community and they're really serving the public. But when they're nothing more than 
run groups for for the the industry that's funding them. And the, and the, the big exposure was there's this global energy balance network. And if you go, I think we published this, the article on Friday, uh, Wednesday. I'm sorry, today's Friday, Wednesday. And it's really interesting. They had. Uh, the, the 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 strategy that the soda companies are using because they're getting a lot of flack for this in the, in the media and actually Marion Nestle is coming out with a great book in October fifteenth I believe it's called Soda Policies which goes into this great detail and I'm going to be interviewing her for that launch uh, is uh, that the, the uh, they have these behind this these the scenes seen activities in front of these astroturf groups and this the, they're getting a lot of flack though for this the commonly widespread appreciation understanding that sodas are responsible. It's actually the, the, the video below that, which is really, really good. Uh, Anthony, if you could just show that, it's really yeah, good. Yeah, absolutely, we'll get it on screen. Yeah, yeah so it's because you got to see this guy, Stephen Blair. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> if you're watching on he, PrisonPlanet.tv, he, we're on Mercola.com highlighting the he, article right now. He is the spokesperson for the Global Energy Network. And he, he looks like the, about the least healthy spokesperson you can possibly be. But the emphasis, you just freeze it there. You can see, take a look at him. But the, it's the it's really sh shocking because they, they want you to believe that it's not about drinking soda at all. It's just because you aren't moving enough. Now, there is some truth to the fact that we don't move enough. Well, Dr. McCullough, calories in, calories out. There's no such thing <laughs> as good or bad food. You're a conspiracy yeah. theorist. You don't want to eat trans fat and aspartame and GMO and Roundup. Calorie in, calorie out. Yeah, that's the conventionally taught thing. And if you go lower down to the page, you'll see a one-hour lecture by Zoe Harcomb. I also interviewed phenomenal researcher from the UK. She's a PhD uh, initially in, I think, physics. Or, or math, mathematics, and wrote this book. But I've never seen a more definitive destruction of that whole component of more cal calories in, and less calories and more activity is the answer to weight loss. I mean, it has to do with this. If you go into the details of the second law of thermodynamics, and it's just it's just so seriously flawed. And if you listen to her lecture, you'll go into much. It goes much more details if you still believe that myth. So. Uh, that is uh, something that I would, uh, you know, it's, it's really interesting that, we, you know, it's just another area where we're starting to see some good progress in that respect. No, absolutely. And it seems like time and time again, we have to break that myth that all food is created equal. And it reminds me of, it might have been Coca-Cola, it might have been Pepsi, though, paying off health leaders to say that it's a healthy drink. You just have to exercise more. And I don't know about you, Dr. McCullough, but I'm certainly not paid off by Coca-Cola or Pepsi to say it's healthy. And I'm going to tell the truth on air. And I know you do, too. And thank yeah. you for fighting all of this. And in closing, a final statement that you'd like to make in terms of all this. Well, just to know that you can take control of your health. I mean, you have the opportunity. Don't be deceived. Don't be fooled. Make sure you get information from all sides so you can carefully understand it. And, you know, ultimately, you're responsible for your health. Not That's right. Thank you so much. We'll be back with more. Totalitarianism comes in many different flavors throughout history. It can come from the right wing, the left wing. It can come from religious cults. It can come from a foreign invading army. And in the modern 21st century, it's basically coming from political correctness, masquerading as the Renaissance, masquerading as liberalism. It seeks to shut down free speech. And the controlled globalist left has willing accomplices in the Republican Party and other conservative and libertarian organizations and groups throughout the world. The robber barons that control this planet are not free market. They are monopoly men who seek to have systems free of competition controlled by offshore combines above the law. The main mission of Infowars.com and my 20 years on air is to shatter the left-right paradigm and to get the public to become aware of what's really governing and controlling society on a mass scale. Bottom line, we have reached that legendary, colossal moment in history where the next thousand years of human development, our very destiny, is being decided. That's why we're launching Operation Money Bomb 2015. 
the first money bomb I've done in three years because we only do these if they're critical to be able to build up our infrastructure. And with the money we raise from this, we will be able to stay on the satellites and get on UHF, VHF, and cable stations across North America, reaching tens of millions of more people right at the time they're receptive and looking for answers. Starting September 16th through the 17th, we're going to broadcast live from 11 a.m. on the 16th through 2 p.m. on the 17th for 20